Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array. Have you ever wanted to archive a massive Premiere Pro project with files scattered all over your computer? Or maybe consolidate everything into a nice neat package so you can hand it off to another video editor? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a few clicks. Okay, so in order to actually do what we've just described, you're gonna be using what's known as the Project Manager. I've pulled up an old finished project to test this out. And to find your project manager, go up to File, Project Manager. Now from here, we're basically gonna give it a few different parameters to tell it exactly how to take the footage in the project we're currently in and put it all into a nice folder in the location of your choosing. Keep in mind, this will either copy everything as a duplicate or delete and replace things depending on what you actually select. So the first thing that you wanna do is make sure that everything in your project is actually available to be either duplicated or replaced into that new folder. The way you're gonna be doing this is by first going up to your sequences here and selecting all of the sequences that you're wanting to include from your project. This will include, for example, when you've nested clips into a subsequence to work with more effectively. So make sure that you don't skip any sequences that actually ended up in your final result. Otherwise, if somebody else opens up this project file later, they'll end up with missing clips. No, God! Next, right here we have our main decision. We have options to either collect and copy the files to a new location, or consolidate and transcode. So what's the difference? Well, like you might expect, one will actually copy your materials and place them into a new folder with all of the originals remaining untouched exactly where they were, while transcoding will actually take your originals and make changes directly to them, potentially changing them and altering them forever if you don't have any other backups. So why would you actually wanna transcode your media instead of just straight keeping the originals and making a copy of everything? Well, because after transcoding, the result is only gonna take up a fraction of the original. I went back to use an old video we created on DaVinci Resolve versus Premiere Pro, and this video took over 172 gigabytes of material to actually create. But after transcoding, the actual calculated space that it would take up is only 75 gigabytes. So you can really see how this space would really add up, or in this case, be subtracted. And this will allow you to keep all of your finished projects in case you ever wanna go back to them, but not worry so much about how massive the materials are if you're keeping them for an archive. If you're archiving, it's likely because you don't have big plans for that footage or that project down the line. It's probably already dealt with. Chances are that once you're finished with that project, any additional things that you wanna do won't need to be insanely crazy high original quality, and the difference between the originals and the transcoded files might actually be negligible to the untrained eye anyways. But if you're a pack rat like me and you hate the idea of losing potential quality or sections of the original footage, you'll likely just wanna copy it all instead. So let's start by looking at copying to a new location. This will ensure that all the materials are copied to a duplicate location and none of the original files are actually gonna to be touched. And here, under the destination path, you can choose exactly where everything will actually be placed once it's finished copying. Depending on the size of your project, you'll wanna make sure that your destination actually has enough space to hold the new project once it's finished being copied there. And to get a feel for what that will be, you can go down to the resulting file size and click Calculate to get that number for yourself. And conveniently, they've already placed the exact amount of space that the drive you've currently selected actually has to be able to store it. Right now, our project size would be 159 gigabytes, which would actually be too much to copy it to this particular drive. Okay, so let's take a look at a few more options you have from the options section here. Here we have exclude unused clips, meaning that if it's not found in a sequence or a subsequence within your timeline, it's actually not gonna end up in that newly copied folder, which is great for reducing the file size if you don't care about some of that extra footage. But if you're passing this on to another editor, for example, and you want them to have the ability to look through other takes of footage and other options and swap things in and out in a way that maybe you didn't include in your personal edit, they won't be able to do that. So if you want to keep everything, uncheck this box. But if you do want to reduce it down to just the materials that are actually used, make sure that this is checked. And we can see that by excluding unused materials, we end up reducing the total file size by a lot. You can also choose to include audio conform files. Chances are these will be quite small and nice to have. The same goes for preview files. They're both not mandatory and Premiere Pro can recreate these pretty easily once you've opened up the project again. But if they don't take up much room, they might be nice to have, especially if you're handing off to another editor so that they can get up and running immediately. Here you can also rename media files to match clip names, which basically just means that if you've renamed your clips in Premiere Pro, 
When it makes copies to a new location, that copy file will be named with that new name instead of the raw format it came out of the camera, like A001 underscore AW37 or whatever. And if we switch back to transcoding your media here, you can see that now we have a few different options. You can choose how long of handles you want to keep on your footage, which basically means that if your footage is actually in the timeline, it'll be kept, but only the pieces that are actually found within the timeline, like only keeping a snippet out of the larger clip as a whole. And the handles that it's referring to are basically just how much extra room at the beginning and the end of the clip that's kept just in case you want to do something like reframe or readjust timing slightly. Converting image sequences to clips simply takes a bunch of photos in sequence and turns them into one video clip instead for simplicity. If you don't want that, just leave that unchecked. And that's the similar case too for converting After Effects compositions to clips. If you want to turn that composition into its own baked in video file, then this would be the time to do that. But make sure that you know if you're handing this off to another editor, this will prevent them from actually making changes to that dynamically linked composition in After Effects and having that actually show up in the resulting timeline here in Premiere Pro. But on the other hand, if you're archiving for a long ways down the road, there's no telling who might be opening and making edits to this file and having a nice baked in video clip of the After Effects link will ensure that if they don't have After Effects installed, for example, they can still edit without that particular section appearing blank. No! And then finally, preserve alpha simply means that you're telling Premiere Pro to recognize where clips have blank, empty, transparent parts to them, and to keep those transparent instead of filling it in with black video, which is the default if this is not selected. Once you've made all of your decisions, to actually set it in motion, just go down to the bottom and hit OK. It'll take some time depending on the size of your project, but once it's done, you can find it where you set up the location to be and it's all neatly packaged for you to either archive or send off to another editor. And it'll likely have the naming structure of copied, underscore, and whatever the title of your project actually was. And if you double click it to see what's inside, you should notice that it's got its own Premiere Pro project file right here, so that if somebody just had this particular folder, they could actually open up the project and just work on it right from here. And guys, that's just been a quick rundown of how to use and get the most out of the project manager in Premiere Pro. I really hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, feel free to let us know, like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and check out all of the other awesome stuff we have right here at MotionArray.com. Thanks so much for stopping by, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.